welcome back to the channel next racing fans so today we're gonna do something a little bit different um, I believe six seven months ago had a custom oil pan made for the car got the oil pan at the time I thought it was gonna be a perfect fit for the car now that I look at it uh, it's kind of a little bit some improvements that I can make on it but I think what I'm gonna end up doing is using this oil pan for a separate build and then making my own custom oil pan so what I'm gonna be doing today is is I'm gonna be basically out of some cardboard um, I'm gonna be making a template for a new oil pan and we're gonna go from there so I'm gonna give you guys a look at the old oil pan that I had custom made before um, show you guys the flaws in it some of the benefits of it and then we'll go over what we're gonna do with the new oil pan. So let's go ahead and get this turned around so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. So as you can see here, this is the oil pan I had custom made. So as you can see here, there's an AN fitting already welded onto here. I believe this is a uh, dash 12 AN fitting. The pan itself, I believe it holds a uh, quart and a half more of oil than it does stock you can see here's custom drain fitting on the bottom it's made out of stainless steel so it does will not rust a little bit of debris on the bottom but as you can see in the inside there's no type of baffling or anything and that's what really concerns me at the moment so there not being any type of baffling being that I'm building a drag car railroad drive if I happen to lift the front wheels off the ground the first thing you know this pan's gonna be you know straight in line like this the first things that's gonna happen is is that it's gonna move up like this so all the oil is gonna try to pour towards the back which is gonna be away from the oil pickup tube which as you can see here I also had a custom oil pickup tube made um, so let me see I believe it comes from this side over here and it comes down like this so it, it, it gets in there pretty deep um, I believe it's probably a quarter a little less than a quarter inch off the bottom um, probably a little less than that too but had that custom made as well try to help with the oil starvation um, I also have the oiling system a custom oil pump that I ordered that once that comes in I'll go ahead and make another video on that I'm not gonna get in too much detail because I want you guys to see exactly what I'm talking about uh, but we'll go ahead and make a template off this what I'm gonna do is first is I'm gonna cut out of cardboard the the side here and now I'll start off with that I see here in the seven bolt the six bolt they're straight across here the seven bolt has a little bit of an indention in here so I'm gonna have to do that somehow with the cardboard putting a little bit of an indention in there and then we'll go from there we'll go ahead and make this part first which is gonna be a little bit more simpler what my my idea is is to have it to where this is where the the turbo drains to right here that being said once the the oil drains from the turbo I really want it to go in the pan as quickly as possible this being how it is if I put it straight the most of the the oil is going to be stuck in this area because it's not slanted down so when I build a new pan this whole section here probably is going to be slanted down a couple degrees that way once the oil does come down out of the turbo it'll go straight into the pan as quickly as possible that way we can kind of steer away from any oil starvation of the motor another idea that it had as well is to uh, maybe build a little bit of a front pocket here to build more oil to hold more oil in and then I'm also going to add a bunch of baffling in here um, probably going to put a piece from here to here to just like this where it's slanted down but maybe put another piece on the side over here to kind of prevent it from splashing up if it does and just in case it does do a willy and the oil you know splashes back but what I'm gonna do next guys is I'm gonna give you show you guys I'm gonna I'll fill this up with some water 
and show you guys what happens if the car does do a wheelie, what happens to the oil. In this, in this demonstration, it's gonna be water, but show you guys what, what's gonna happen with the oil just in case you know it does do a wheelie. And we'll see how much water ends up back here and not in the pan. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and get this outside, get the hose connected, and then I'll be right back. All right guys, so I've got the pan filled with, with water to show you guys a little idea of what would happen if the car did do a willy. So um, what I'm gonna do is, let me see if I can find something to hold it back real quick. I think maybe this will do right here. I got this empty oil. oil. So basically in the car, it's gonna be sitting like this, even flat. Um, it might have a little bit less oil than what it shows now, but or you know right now there's water in it but it'll be oil and then if it did do a wheelie so let's just say we go to the extreme in terms of the wheelie and that's kind of the extreme if it gets up there but as you can see a lot of the water's pouring out obviously the water won't pour out I mean the oil won't pour out of the motor but looking in there you can kind of see that a lot of the water is gone the oil pickup is going to be roughly around here that being said um looks like we might starve the oil the, the motor of oil if we did do a quick willy putting it back down there would be you know would be going back to the normal oil levels but i feel like lifting it up like this let's see back up you can kind of see, you know, it keeps some of the oil in there, but I believe we need to keep a little bit more. So we're gonna go ahead and make another oil pan to prevent all that oil from ending up here. We're gonna, we want it more in the oil, the main oil pan itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this dumped out. And then we're gonna go ahead and get the cardboard box all right so as you guys see I have the oil pan on this board here it's called a ready board it's like a foam board um, it's almost the same thickness of what I'm going to be using for the oil pan it's probably a little bit thicker than that but it is flexible so that kind of helps me out as well so what I'm going to be doing now is just I'm just going to outline the tank itself do an outline mark all where the holes are going to the holes are, are at that way I have an idea. And then once I have that, I'll go ahead and get it cut out. Once I get that cut out, then I'll start forming the shape of the actual oil pan. So let's go ahead and get the line. in a different color. The reason I'm marking the holes is because I want to see where I can start welding in terms of the side panel here, these side panels. So when I weld them on, obviously I have to leave a little bit of a gap in between where the bolt's gonna go and where the side is. So I need to know where the bolts are at, that way I have an idea of 
how much more I'm in I need to be in terms of when I start welding. Um, the only hole I couldn't get to is this one here. Oh, there it goes. And that's all of them. So what I'll do now is I'll take a measuring tape, which I have over here. And I'll just measure the lip around roughly. And roughly we're looking at seven eighths, seven eighths. This one here is only three quarters, three quarters. So anywhere from three quarters to seven eighths. Um, this one here is seven eighths. Seven eighths. So I'm gonna stick with seven eighths all the way around. That being said, I'm gonna get this pulled off. You see we have somewhat of the outline here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is now I'm just gonna mark seven eighths inside so I kind of have an idea Please be careful with this so uh, you don't get yourself cut. Alright, so now we got this piece here. Let me just double verify this one goes up. So this is going to go in the back here. So this is going here. of tapes so we could tape that on all right we're back guys so as you can see side by side comparison of what I'm going to be building versus what I have so this kind of basic kind of rectangular shape oil pan um, just kind of I guess you could say square and this one's a little bit more rectangular I guess has a little bit more shape to it so as you can see here Right here, we're going to have a two inch depth right here. It'll go down to here. This right now roughly is, I believe, nine and a half, almost 10 inches. Uh, we're going to cut that down to roughly eight inches. So we're going to do eight inches and then we're going to extend this out right now. This, I believe, is also two inches um, long and we're going to add a, another inch to it. So we're going to make it three inches. Um, so it's going to be eight inches. Um, this is going to be three inch stick out right here. So we're going to, cause we're going to cut this off. Cause as you can see here, looking at them side by side, the one on the right is a lot taller. Even if I like kind of put this straight, which is not going to go straight cause of the, um, the oil, um, the oil bolt on the bottom. So as you can see, this is what's going to look like. And it's going to be out of aluminum. So I'm going to do aluminum oil pan. Um, I'm, so what I'm going to do now is I'll go ahead and get this cut open here so I can look in there so I can figure out what kind of pieces I'm going to do to baffle it. As you can see, this one has this little small lip here, but it doesn't really help. Uh, but we'll go ahead and open this up, look in it, see what I can do in terms of baffling to get it to where the oil will stay where it needs to stay. And the reason why I need to cut this down a little bit shorter is because when I use, I probably still will use this oil pickup tube. I can't, I don't want to make it to where the bottom of the oil pan is so far away from where the pickup tube is. So it, it would, it would look something like that. So it would be, it would be so far away. So if I cut two inches off of it, it'll be a lot closer 
to the oil pickup too. So it'll be a lot closer to the bottom where it has better chance of picking up oil. So what I'll do now is I'll take each panel off individually. After I get this cut open, I'll, so I can look in it first, I'll take the panels off individually. I'll go ahead and measure them, write down the measurements of each piece that I need. What I'll do is I'll order the pieces that I need a quarter of an inch bigger than what I really need. That way it gives me a little bit of wiggle room to, I can grind it down or cut it to make it fit. I'd rather be over in terms of length than under because then you would have to add a piece in there to weld. At least this, at least this way you can just grind it down or cut it down and it would be a lot better. So that being said, what do you guys think? All right, next racing fans. So we are on our way to the metal supermarket here in Tampa. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and see the cost of the material that I need for the custom oil pan that I'm gonna be making. Obviously, if you guys uh, watching this video, you guys know it's gonna be made out of aluminum. So we're gonna go ahead and see what the cost is roughly to go ahead and get this oil pan made. All right guys, so we made it to the store. So we're gonna go ahead and go in, get the quote, and see how much it is. All right guys, so I just got out of the metal supermarket here. We got the custom quote for all the pieces that we need to make the custom oil pan. Came out to be a decent price. Uh, we're gonna ahead and get to get it on order. Once it's on order, they're going to give me a call. We'll get it picked up, take it home, so start getting it welded up, and uh, go ahead and see how it comes out. Hopefully it comes out like how I guys showed you in the mock-up before. Um, if not, we'll go ahead and make some, we got to make some changes to it anyway, but we'll go ahead and get the mock-up done. We got to get some pieces cut a little bit more because they can't custom cut them. So we'll get the pieces cut up with the angle grinder and then we'll go from there. So we'll go ahead and get this turned around, we'll go ahead and get back home, um, wait for the phone call to get the pieces uh, picked up and we'll go from there. See you guys in a little bit.